Monograms 1971 Plymouth GTX coming up next on Monster Hobbies. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody and welcome back to another model car unboxing video in our 1971 series as today we get to take a look at the Monogram 1971 Plymouth GTX. And this is a really cool kit again loaned to us from our good friend James. In fact he hasn't even opened it you can see it's still shrink wrapped so this will be a co totally cool new experience for all of us involved. <laughs> Anyway, if you love these great videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Click the notification bell down below so that every time I make a new video, you're the first one to see it. And it's going to be quite a groovy one today. And if you are on the hunt for model car kits, don't forget that I do own Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. And we have an online web store at www.monster-hobbies.com. Ca. And if you sign up for the newsletter, you can get um, on our mail out list where we get to send out great flyers that have discount coupon codes so that you can save money on your favorite model cars that are over there. So without further ado and stalls, uh, 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 <laughs> let's go down to our showroom and see what's in the box. And now we wind the clock all the way back to 71 where we get to check out this cool 71 Plymouth GTX. This course is part of the Dream Rides series, which is pretty cool. It's like a dream come true. <laughs> right on. This is a monogram kit, again loaned to us by our good friend James, which is really cool because I don't have this kit in my collection. And actually I've been wanting one of these. So... Uh, there is a new release of this, and it's, of course, one of the Fast and Furious cars. And I've seen this thing in car magazines, I've seen it painted black, I've seen somebody said, uh, Darth Vader, your car is waiting for you, and that that's like a magazine from 83. <laughs> anyway, so this is a scale level 2 kit, 124 scale, which again is sort of the, the um, characteristic monogram scale. Most of the monogram cars came in 24th instead of 25th. Ages 10 and up. We'll just take a look at the side of the box here. This one came out in 2012, uh, this version of it, but of course this is an earlier model going back many, many years. There's all the write-up from the model as well as a paint guide right on the side of the box, which is nice for when you're in the hobby shop after you get this thing and you don't want to go home, open up the instructions and then come back to the store. All the colors are right there. Then of course our end of the box looks like the lid. On this side we get more right up as well as this nice image of the 446 pack and the back of the car. Again, very nice car for its era. What's nice about this model kit is it's never been opened so thankfully Thanks to James here. He's letting us open it up. Now, I'm going to use my number 11 hobby blade. Let's just go like this again. Cut at an angle. So that way I can just open the plastic this way. Let's see, it should be able to lift the lid now. These boxes are so tall. There we go. Oop. Getting caught up on the... There. Okay, whoops. Hitting my frame here. Alright, so we've got our glass. This time it's in a bag. Thank goodness. It won't get scratched. Good job. Okay, and then we've got our tires. These are tall and skinnies. And then we've got our front chrome in plastic, so it won't get scratched, which again is nice. Then all our cool white components. Look at how long this car body is. It pretty much hits both ends of that box. Nice. Big Chrysler B body. I do believe it's B body, right guys? Anyway, there's our instruction sheet here. And inside, 
nicely sheltered, and with a bit of paper on the top are the decals. So let's clear this out of the way, and we'll look at our instruction sheet. I wonder why my camera's having trouble focusing this time. Okay, we'll clear it all out of the way, and then take a look at our instructions. Has this ever happened to you? Oh, hey honey, I just came back from the hobby shop. You wouldn't believe what they had. They had this van here that's just exactly the same as how my dad's van was, but it's a Coca-Cola one, and I want to build it, and man, I can't wait to see what this looks like. And then you went downstairs to your workbench. All right, let's see what's in here. Oh, man, this is the worst thing I ever got. Or maybe it went like this. Oh man, this is the best model kit I ever could have got. If you're looking for great model car unboxing review videos, don't forget to subscribe to us over at the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage, found on YouTube, and I'll leave the link in the description below. Here we have our 1971 Plymouth GTX instruction sheets. And again, there's no picture of the car on the front here, which is kind of odd, but they do give you a write-up here in English, French, and Spanish. So I'm going to use the English one in our description down below. So you guys can check that out in your spare time. Opening this up here. Oh, it's actually going to go off camera a little bit. But we've got all our read this before you begin in many lang no in the same language groups, and then our decal application, customer service number, and then of course all the symbols that are going to appear, like uh, repeat the process, uh, repeat several times, the optional parts, the decals, your cautions, your cement, remove and throw away pieces, do not cement, open a hole, remove tape, trim off rubber band this thing together, use a sticker decal, add weight. I've never seen half of these in these instructions. And heated screwdriver end. Wow, that's kind of interesting. All right, well anyway, they give you all the symbol codes. Whether or not we're using them is a different story. And of course this flips open. So let's, uh, what do you think? Should we zoom in onto this panel right here and take a closer look? I think so. Now after that momentary burst of personality, I've got to tone it down and go all monotone Ben style. <laughs> so anyway, um, no, just kidding, but um, <laughs> all right. Here we have our engine going together. We've got the typical style monogram engine block. This one's an automatic. Uh, we've got our two pieces, the engine block and transmission together, gluing together. And then, uh, oh yeah, Ben Stein, <laughs> our cylinder heads. And then we have the valve covers here, as well as the intake manifold going on and our front engine cover. Followed down here by our distributor going on to the front of the engine block. Moving forward here, we've got the engine down there, which shows our carburetors, the tri-carburetors, which were very fast and powerful for 1971, gluing on top of the manifold. Okay, enough of that, eh? All right, and then we've got our exhaust manifolds going on here. Down here's our belt assembly, and as you can see, you've got basically two belts going on. So this one, I do believe that's a power steering pump on this side. And then our alternator on this side with the fan with the clutch on there. This shows how our uh, exhaust manifolds glue on the sides. Then this will go on there and that's showing you there. The front end of our Plymouth GTX is very much like our monogram Hemi Cudas very groovy. <laughs> There's our front wheel going on here with, of course, the paint in pink codes in there. Going in through our tire and the wheel back. We've got our K-frame with the torsion bars molded all in place. And remember, these little pins are one way only, so once you pop this plate on, you'll never be able to take the, the wheel off because this little mushroom head will lock it in place. 
So what you want to do is scrape the um, seam lines off here. Make this really round on your axle pin before you pop this on. Because otherwise, if there's flash on there and you pop this on, your wheel is going to lock in there forever. Also, if there's any paint, remove that, of course. Then our engine will go up into our subframe here. Followed by our rear axle assembly. And this is all one component. However, actually, this is very much like the Plymouth Superbird, the 1970. Uh, because the rear axle and the exhaust manifold, or pipes, pardon me, are all molded in with the springs. And then you put your, uh, your, <laughs> this guy in here, your drive shaft, pardon me, momentarily slipped. The nice part about these, um, exhaust pipes sticking out here is you can actually paint them and get all the way around them before you glue this on. So that's always nice. Next up we have our groovy interior. And we've got our bucket seats going in with the seat backs and then our shifter. And the interior is a big bucket so you're going to get slightly soft detail along the sides. The console, center console is molded in place as is the rear bench or the rear seat. Carrying on with our interior, we have our dashboard, which consists of the dashboard, the steering column, and the steering wheel. Once that's together, it all drops nicely into place. Now right here, this is showing the radiator gluing into the body. Then we have our glass going in and our chrome rearview mirror. Then our interior bucket will drop into the body. We've got our awesome rear um, lights and bumper going in place and then our little roll pan gluing on the top with the exhaust exit ports and then the entire chassis assembly will pop into the body from underneath step four shows our heater motor and this little bit here I guess windshield wiper motor gluing together and gluing on the back firewall and then our front chrome <laughs> Our grill and headlight um, surround here. The headlights popping in. Remember that waffle pattern on there goes north and south, east and west, not at a 45 or 33.3 degree angle. Groovy, 33 and a third. Actually, it was interesting. That term groovy, I always thought came from like the late 60s, early 70s. And then I watched a promotional uh, thing on... Oh, I forget what it was, but it was from the 40s, and the girl there was saying groovy. So that, I didn't realize that term was so old. Anyway, that's interesting history for you. There's our pan that goes underneath, and then we've got these little bits going there, as well as these parking lights. I remember what the movie was where the girl was saying it was groovy. It was Miracle on 34th Street which was made just after World War II. And uh, it was actually a um, movie trailer for it because they didn't really want to show that it was a Santa Claus movie because it came out in June. <laughs> so anyway, there's our air cleaner going down on the tricarbs as well as the brake master cylinder and this radiator hose. So again, very nice, very simple um, assemblies. Panel 5 shows what's going on under the hood. We've got this nice little component that pops on. This is a seal for the top of that air cleaner for our tricarbs. And then we've got our hood with a little hole and the scoop going on here. Our final panels show our side mirrors going on with the little glass going in the housing. And our spoiler gluing on to the back. And down here is our paint guide, just like on the front of the box. Panel 6 shows our decal placement on our Plymouth GTX. The big stripes and all the side marker lights and the little scripts and everything else. Even looks like you get your uh, rear tail lights going on in here. So again, very cool instruction sheet. And that completes our look at our 1971 Plymouth GTX instruction sheet. Now let's take a look at our white plastic components.
Back in July 2013, High River experienced a massive flood. Although many things were damaged and destroyed in the High River flood, we were able to save some of our products. Wait until you see what I have inside the Studebaker. In this video, we will restore one of them as best we can. I'm just going to open up the door here. These all got hit in the High River flood, and I managed to rescue as many as I could. Oh wow, is this car ever dirty? Now there's only one solution to fixing those car wheels, and that of course is... Repaint. Wow, that car looks so much better now! Here we have our 1971 Plymouth GTX body, and as you can see, it is very long. Uh, just like a typical monogram kit of this era, we have the battery molded in place, as well as the windshield washer bottle, or possibly radiator overflow bottle, molded in place underneath. Here we have our nice grill up here, and we have our hood release, which is quite nice, as well as this big emblem here on the hood. We've got the little mounts for our rear spoiler off the back. Turning this up, you can see our door handles, as well as the rocker panner molding, GTX script here, our side marker lights. Underneath, there are some mold marks in the roof. Now, I'd say, oh, these are lower though, so you'd have to fill them actually. Now normally I'd say take your number 16 hobby blade and scrape them off. Somebody was asking me in the comments why I always say to use that. Well, let's take a look at it this way. This is a number 11 hobby blade and you can see that point there off the end. So if you're going to try to scrape these, you're just scraping them with that point. Or you're going to have to come through the windshield here, which you can't really do. Or maybe, oh, you, I guess you could go this way and try to scrape it like this, but then, I don't know, can you see that? The angle is not quite right with that. So instead, I got this number 16 hobby blade, and as you can see, this is more of a 45 degree angle, whereas this one is like 30, 28, somewhere in there. So with this one, you can actually kick it across there. hot water tanks coming on. Okay, so I'll make this brief. So there's the front there, and the back is wide open. Of course that's for our bumper and our front end of the car. So there's our body, and let's check out the other white components. Now that my hot water tank has finally done its deal, <laughs> can take a look at the next two parts. So here we have our front bucket seats going together. Seat front, seat back. And then our great chassis here, subframe, 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 uh, rocker panels, of course, would hold the car together along the side. And then here we've got our under hood details. There's the uh, thing for under the hood, the seal. There's the heater motor, the spoiler, the little scoop, those little bits, and our intake manifold. So let's just bring this up closer to the camera. Discovered something interesting here in a minute. You can see the nice detail there. Detail on the seats. It's got the uh, pleats going this way instead of up and down. If you turn this upside down, just in here, you can actually see a date which says 1984. So this kit has been with us for a very long time. There are some mold marks under here. Again, you can use your hobby knives to get rid of those. Overall, not bad. Basic, typical stuff for a monogram, of course. Goes together nicely. There's all our under hood details. The um, little seal looks quite nice. That's our scoop there. There's a mold mark right underneath, so again, remove that with your hobby blade. One under the center of the spoiler. The little legs are in place. There's also some there. Overall, not bad. 
not bad at all. Our next parts tree has given us some good vibes here. So you can see we've got our mirrors, we got our belt, engine components, there's our front engine cover, our brake master cylinder, there's our little radiator here, our dashboard, drive shaft, rear axle with springs, differential with springs, and our exhaust pipes, the rear rolled pan, the front pan, steering wheel, fan with clutch, then our headers, and our upper radiator hose. And as you can see, of course, we've got some great detail going on here. Look at that awesome instrument panel. Very much like an aircraft with all the different gauges. Yep, real cool. That's quite the deep pan. <laughs> but again, adds character to the car. Some mold marks underneath. Not in any major locations where they'd be a problem. So overall, again, nice easy parts to do and very nicely detailed. Our final parts tree in these colors, of course, consist of our hood, our interior tub bucket, as well as the wheel backs and our engine block, cylinder heads, steering column, and front K member with torsion bars and all the rest molded in place. I kind of have this upside down. <laughs> you can see our mold marks here, again using your hobby knife to remove. There's the floor here, that again your number 16 blade. Looking at the side, you got nice interior detailing going on there, as well as our seats molded in place. Sort of uh, buckets, but it's on a bench seat, which is interesting. There's our pedals, which I do believe are correct for the automatic. So you got your gas, your brake, and your parking brake. Turning this over, now we can see our engine block a lot better. Looks pretty nice for the 446 pack. And then there, of course, is our hood. Now, in case you don't know, the 446 pack is referring to the three two barrel carburetors and the 440 is the cubic inch displacement of our engine. But again, you know, looking over these parts, they are nice, crisp, and quite simple for the beginning, actually not really beginning modeler, basically like, uh, I would say this is sort of not really skill level two, but skill level sort of one and a half. No, I don't know. Maybe it's a two. Anyway, Looks pretty good and will go together quite nicely. Darth Vader, your chrome is waiting. <laughs> All right, here's the chrome for this 71 Plymouth GTX. And as you can see, there is a nice grill in here. There's our wheels, our valve covers, and our rear bumper with the taillights in place, as well as our air cleaner here. There's our tricarbs. Uh, there's the rear view mirrors or the side mirrors actually there's a rear view mirror there's the alternator and this is the shift lever I do believe kind of hard to tell from where I'm standing look at that nice grill the GTX molded in the center and a spot for our headlights to go in looking at the rear bumper you can see all those groovy rear tail lights basically the wheels are Again, the rally style. Very, very cool. Very nice detail on it. Turning it over, mold mark, of course, underneath. Paint all this flat black so you don't see it when you flip over the car, just like the real thing. Alternator, of course, inside here. Use some testers, Model Master, turn signal red. Actually, not Model Master. They're back to the square bottles at this stage in our history, this being 2021. Again, you can use those colors in the back here, or the Tamiya Clear Red, Tamiya Clear Red. You say Tamiya, I say Tamiya. <laughs> anyway, there's our chrome. Here we have our glass and our tires. And I thought I'd do these together again because, well, the components are small enough, might as well. Now, let's start with our glass. As you can see, this is typical of the earlier style glass that has long runners connecting the two windows. You can saw these off using your hobby saw. 
and just glue this into the back and that into the front or leave the runners in place if you're unsure. There are some mold marks here which again you can sand out. Then there's your little parking lamps and your headlights which plug in. They've got those long pins off the back as you can see. Again this was in a bag so thankfully there's nothing scraped on there unlike the Hemi Cuda. Now our tires here, again, they're generic. They've had the names scraped off of them, off the side. But at one point in time, uh, on my um, Plymouth Superbird, these tires actually said Goodyear, Poly or Goodyear GTs, uh, being the bias belted again. Nice tread pattern on them. But you're going to have to cut all these little bits off of the tree and then put it in your tire spinning device, a little sandpaper on them, and spin all that off. Maybe in the future I'll make a video on how to clean up tires, just for more authenticity. So that's our tires there, and our glass. Last but not least, we have our decal sheet. And we've got these nice GTX license plates from Illinois, as well as these Plymouth Makes It Heart license plates, which I guess were showroom style. There we've got our nice black hood stripe going on here with the stripe also on the air cleaner and our little air cleaner sides, which had those sort of World War II teeth on it from the aircraft, which is uh, actually correct. Our 446 barrel decal for the air cleaner. There's our side marker lights and our scripts if you don't want to paint them on or actually get it a little more accurate because this is red with the white in there. A couple little rings and more of the black trim pieces. Again, very nice decal sheet for our Plymouth GTX. And that completes our look at our monogram 1971 Plymouth GTX loaned to us from our good friend James. Thank you once again. And if you've built this model kit in the past, let us know in the descriptions down below how you liked it, how was the build, what color did you paint it, and how did other people like it? I don't know, that's a weird question. Well, let us know by sharing on our Facebook page, link in the description down below. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that great model car unboxing video, and I do hope you get some great success in finding one of these out there on the web or wherever, or maybe they'll re-release it. And again, a big thank you for James for loaning us his own model kit out of his own personal collection so that we can chronicle all things model cars and other models. Anyway, if you want to find some great model kits at a good price, don't forget to check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca on our online store and sign up for our newsletter because we send out flyers and everything else. And in those flyers are, of course, everything that we're selling in our store, as well as great flyers with promo codes so that you can save a bit of money on your next purchases. And if you love these great videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with all your friends and family. Boom! The notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first one to see it. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.